Hi, everybody. I'm Alice K. Reckelhaus from Threshold of Hineni and the Widow Reckelhaus. And today I want to move forward in our talk about anxiety. We've been talking about the causes of anxiety and specifically about sin. And the reason it was so important to talk about anxiety as sin and recognize if it was sin is because we need to be healed from that. It's really interesting because sin is like an injury. It's not just something that you go, oh, bad, bad, bad. It's something that injures us. It injures our relationship with God. It injures us inside. And it's very interesting because if you look at the Catholic catechism, when they talk about the sacrament of confession, it's in medical terms, and it's all about our wounds and being healed and stuff like that. And so um, that's why it's so important to talk about anxiety as sin, because if we don't recognize it as that, then we're not going to be able to get healing from it. And so, yeah, it, you, if you don't recognize that you've got something wrong with you, then you don't know to go to a doctor or take an herbal remedy or whatever. You don't know that you need to do something about it. So that's what, why we've talked about that. And then we've also talked about anxiety versus concern and how concern can turn into anxiety and how to handle that. And also how to talk to people who just jump all over you. It's a sin to be anxious, bye, 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 you're bad, you know, and all that stuff and why that's not helpful. So we've talked about all that. And so now I want to start talking about different things that can solve anxiety and can help you to live a life of faith and trust instead. Okay. So when you look at things like this, it's not like going to the doctor and getting a pill that will cure your disease. And usually those don't cure your disease. Usually they just cure the symptoms. And so you still have the underlying thing. So um, you need to, for, for things like this, there's going to be a whole bunch of things and you can use some of those and not use some of those. But the more layers of things you do that will help you to grow in your faith, the less anxiety you're going to have. So what we're really going to be talking about mostly in the next few videos is how to build your faith, which is good for a lot of reasons. But in this case, we're talking about how specifically it helps you with anxiety. So today, I wasn't going to talk about this until later on in the series. And then I realized but it's kind of foundational for a lot of what I'm going to be talking about in the future. So I want to talk about God's will and God's answers to prayer and specifically how his answers that we that don't go along with what we want, how those are really, really important in building our faith. So I think that what a lot of people don't understand is that when they pray and ask God for something, he has the option of saying no. And that still is an answer to prayer. You know, we say, we put a, a prayer on the prayer chain or we ask our friends to pray for something. And then if we get the answer that we want, we call them all up and say, praise God, he answered my prayer, right? But if he doesn't answer it the way that we want, we're either silent or we ask for more prayer for what we want or something. And what we need to understand is that a no answer is still an answer and it still is a loving and good and praise God answer and we should be saying wow praise God he knew better than me and so he answered it this way and that way might seem harder to us right now it really may seem like it's not loving but what we have to understand is that God knows more than we do he's wiser he's smarter and he loves us more than we even love ourselves. And so, and he's all powerful. So he, which we've talked about all those things before. And so when he answers a question or answers a, a prayer request in a way that we might look at as negative, we have to trust that because he is all knowing, all powerful, and he loves us, that his answer is the right answer. Okay. Um, I'll give you a really huge example of this. It was, you know, when my husband died in the car accident and for days I had felt like there was something wrong and I had begged him not to go 
on this trip and I didn't have a rational reason. Okay. So I don't blame him for going ahead and going and not believing me. Um, but I prayed all day and I just, I mean, I begged God, please don't let anything happen. And God did. And I can't remember if it was that day or the next day that he reminded me. And I, I just, I wouldn't have remind, I wouldn't have remembered this on my own, but he reminded me of what he had been working and trying to teach me for 40 years, which was that God, that he is omniscient. In other words, he knows everything. He's all wise. This wasn't a surprise to him. He knew when he introduced Bill and me that this was going to happen and that I was going to be left devastated. Okay. He knew that. He's all powerful, so he had the power to stop it. He could have made it so it didn't happen. And he also loves both Bill and me. And he did this for our good. He works all things out for good, you know, according to, he works all things out for good for those who love him and are called according to his will. And so, and, and we both are, and I say are because Bill's still alive, okay? Even though he's dead, to us on earth. He's still alive because he believed in God. He believed in Jesus. Um, and so God's worked it all out for good. Do I understand that? No. To me, it is the worst thing that's ever happened in my life. And it's absolutely devastating. But because I know those things about God, because he has shown me that over and over in scriptures, as well as in my own life. Sorry, I forgot to turn off the sand on my phone. So I'm doing that right now. <laughs> um, because of those things, I can trust him. I can say, okay, Lord, to me, this is horrible. To me, it's devastating. I don't know how to handle this, but I trust you. I know that you love me and I know that you want what's best for me and what's best for Bill. And so I trust you. Okay. And I have felt that from the beginning. Um, I, that doesn't mean that I haven't mourned. I have mourned and I have been incredibly depressed and, you know, maybe if I trusted him more, I wouldn't have felt depressed. I don't know, but, um, but I do trust him and I've still gone through those emotions. And to me, that's even part of what God's taking me through part of what he wants me to learn through. Um, it's easy for me to see how this was good for Bill. <laughs> um, he doesn't have to live in this world anymore. Um, he got his happily ever after because we had just been talking about how happy we were in our marriage, even though we were going through really hard times financially and in other ways, um, we loved each other and we were very happy in our marriage. So I know that he died happy, which I'm so grateful for. Um, but I also, the way that the world's going right now would have been Oh my word, he, it just would have upset him so much. And maybe he would have died of COVID, which would have been so much worse than di di dying in a car accident um, and suffering pain for maybe 30 minutes. Um, but COVID would have been awful or just seeing what's happening to our country and seeing it pulled apart. I wouldn't be surprised if he would have had a stroke and had to live paralyzed for the rest of his life. Um, if he had still been here. So it's easy for me to see how this is good for him. Plus he's going to be in heaven, which is a lot better. I mean, I can't even wish him back here because I mean, not that I could wish him back here, but I can't wish that he would be back here um, because then I'd be wishing so much worse for him. For me, on the other hand, it has been ex extremely hard and it's been horrible, but I still trust God. And this is a lot of what has helped me to overcome anxiety in my life is this experience, this experience and seeing that I can trust God, that I know that he knows what he's doing or what he lets happen. And so um, that, that has been a big thing. That's been a big thing. And not that I wish any of that on any of you, <laughs> but, you know, I used to say to my kids, don't make the same mistakes I do. Make different mistakes. <laughs> you know, learn from what you see happening in other people. And so I would say that to you. Learn from my story of horrible, horrible pain. And maybe you won't have to repeat that. You know, you'll go through 
other things, but you'll probably have even greater faith than I do. And um, so, so how did I get to the place of being able to believe that God is good and that he answered my prayers when I begged him not to let something happen to Bill, but something did happen. God was saying no to my prayers because he knows what's best. And I'm able to, I am able to praise him in that even while I'm crying. And even while I'm, you know, maybe lying in bed with the blankets pulled over my head because I'm so depressed because I miss my husband so much. Sorry, I don't want to start crying. Um, but I still trust God. And I, I think that I've become closer to him through this. And I'm not saying all this to say, oh, look at me, I, I've got great faith. I'm saying it to you because I want you to learn from my experience. Um, you know, one of the things that I've thought about over and over and over during the last couple of years is of all the people who have really great marriages or even good marriages, 50% of you are going to go through losing your partner. And we are so not prepared for that. So hopefully this can help prepare you for that a little bit, at least as much as I was prepared, and maybe even more, because if you can learn from my experience, you can stand on my shoulders, you can have even more faith, and you can trust God, and maybe you won't end up in bed pulling the covers over your head and, and depressed for months and stuff. But um, I shared about this whole thing at church one time. Um, where we were having a Bible study a few months after Bill had died. And, um, and my pastor pointed out something that I hadn't really thought about, but this is so important. He said, you didn't come to that place overnight, right? You must have been building that faith all along. And I, and I realized, yeah, I had been. In fact, my pastor's wife, when I was Sometime, sometime between 16 and 18, she planted those exact concepts in me. She talked to me about those a lot. She used to, um, I don't know how many times, it wasn't very many, maybe three times, um, that she asked my parents if it'd be okay to take me out of school so that I could go with her, um, quote unquote, to help, but I didn't really do anything. On um, she, was, she worked for the YMCA, and so she was going to go do some uh, she's going to go speak at some conferences or something, teach some classes. And she really didn't have me do anything except help her set up. It was more so that she could disciple me. And, and these are some of the things that she talked to me about for hours because we were driving a long ways. And I'm so grateful for that because looking back, that really did make a difference in my life. Sorry, I've got my fan on and it blows my hair into my face. <laughs> it gets into my mouth. Um, so that was Marilyn Anaker. I'm going to give her credit. So those things made such an impact on me that over the past 40 years, I have taught those concepts at conferences and retreats and other places that I've gone because those were helping me in my life. I was going through, I went through a lot of really hard, horrible things in the last 40 years. And I won't really talk about those because they involve other people, but um, but just stuff is to say, I've, I've been through hell a lot. <laughs> God's given me a lot of opportunity to learn these things. And I think that in sharing them and in teaching those, they really became even more a part of my life. So how can you start building that in your life so that when you face things that would make you anxious, whether they're small or whether they're huge, like having your spouse killed in an accident, um, you are able to apply those because I don't think that if I hadn't, if I had not been applying those and if I hadn't been maybe teaching those during the last 40 years, I'm not sure that I would have been to the place where I could have understood those or even acted on them. Even if God did remind me still, you know, in the, the day after that or that day, um, so it's something that you have to build into your life. So first of all, the first thing that I would suggest is when you pray and ask God something, and especially be conscious of this as you ask others to pray for you, um, if you do not get the answer that you're looking for, consciously and intentionally thank God, praise God by yourself 
and talk to each of those people that you asked to pray for you and let them know, you know what, it seems like God's choosing not to answer my prayer the way that I wanted it to be answered, but he is answering it. And so I just want to tell you so that you can praise God because he knows what's best and he is wise and loving. And so he deserves praise for doing the hard things for the, you know, to make me grow or to make me closer to him and not just for, you know, making my life a bed of roses. You know, Jesus talks about how uh, the narrow gate is difficult. The way is difficult and the, the road to hell is broad and lots of people are walking on it and it's easy and stuff. And so if we're going through hard times, that's what we need it's it's the it's the narrow road is what we need and a, our loving father puts us on that road and he lets us go through suffering he lets us go through poverty and not having our prayers answered the way that we want them to be so that's the first thing that i would recommend the next thing is to write those things down so that you can go back and look at them you know like i was saying that i think that i learned a lot from I, that I put, I was able to get it into my heart more. Or God was able to get it into my heart more because I had been teaching those principles. Um, if you write those things down and you tell others about them, um, you know, like when you're just reporting on how God's answered your prayer, um, I think that those things would also go a long way towards helping you actually learn these things. Because you can hear me say this, but if you haven't applied that, if you haven't actually praised God for answers that aren't what you wanted, and you haven't written it down and or told others, it's just not gonna stay. You're not gonna recognize it. It's not gonna really become part of your heart. So another thing that I would recommend too, is to continually thank him for that. You know, if you're in a troubled marriage, and things don't just magically become better when you pray for it. Um, find out what things you need to do to work on that marriage. And then praise God for each thing that you find. Each thing, because he's showing you those things. Each thing that you try. And even if that doesn't work, even if it quote unquote fails. Remember how Thomas Edison said that he found 10,000 ways not to make a light bulb. Those were not failures. Those were successes because they were helping him to find out what was right. And so even if something that you try doesn't work, then it still is a success because you've now learned, okay, that doesn't work. So I need to try something else. And so each of those is a victory. Each of those is God loving you and helping you through something. I really, really believe that if God just answers our prayers all the time, the way that we want and makes everything great, we won't grow we won't grow stronger and we won't grow closer to him. We, the way that we are as people is that we tend to go to God most when there's problems. And so, um, you know, so we get lots of problems so that because he loves us and he wants us to be closer to him. And that, so he's drawing us closer to himself, but also we learn to trust him even when things are very difficult. Um, there are lots and lots of examples in the Bible. So if you're just reading your Bible, I, I was going to list a lot of those Bible stories so you could look them up, but here's what I felt like God was putting on my heart is that you need to just read the whole Bible. And if I give you just certain things, you're just going to look up those things. And he wants you to read all of his word because when we read just a story, it's like we take it out of context and I will still continue at other times to put verses and stuff for you to look up, but you need to have those in the context of God's whole counsel. So that's another thing that I would challenge you on in this is to start reading your Bible regularly and you don't have to read straight through, but make sure that you read all of it. Uh, one thing that I really, really love is Father Mike Schmitz right now is doing the Bible in a year and they put it on YouTube. I don't know, a few weeks ago, they were just having it as a podcast before, but now you can get it on YouTube and you can start anytime. It's going to stay up there. So it doesn't matter that this is July right now when you're watching it, if you watch it when I post it, or even like three years from now, you just start on day one. It's, they're like 10 minutes long. And so 
you just listen to him reading the scripture and then he talks about it a little bit and he always gives some way of applying it to your life. And that's really, really important because James says that um, when we hear the word, but we don't do what it says, we're like somebody who looks in the mirror and goes, oh, wow, I'm a real mess, but just walks away and doesn't do anything about it. And so every time that we open up the Bible, I really believe we're supposed to get something out of it. It might be something really small, but we're supposed to get something out of it. So these are the three things that I'm suggesting right now. So the first one is to recognize God's answers to prayer, even if they aren't what you wanted and praise him for that. The second thing is to tell others and write it down. Okay. So that it reinforces it in your mind. And so that you're seeing that as that prayer progresses, you may eventually see how that quote unquote negative answer, how that really was the best. And you may not ever see that. Okay. You may not see that until you get to heaven, but those things are because you've built up your faith, you're going to start trusting God that even those negative things are good for you. The things that seem negative are good for you. And then the third thing is to read the whole Bible. You don't have to read it in a year, um, although it's not very hard to read it in a year, especially if you do something like that thing with Father Mike. Um, and you don't have to read it in order. In fact, I would recommend that you don't read it in order because it's really easy to get bogged down by like the third and fourth books of the Bible. <laughs> so if this is your first time, I don't recommend reading in order. Start with like the book of John or the book of Mark, um, but don't skip the Old Testament. Okay, so one way, I'll just share this really quickly. One way that you can read the Bible that I did um, when I was in college and I loved this and I did it a few other times too um, after, after college. Um, was I had, let's see, I read one, one chapter from the first five books of the Bible, which are called the Pentateuch, the Pentateuch, and then one chapter from Psalms or Proverbs. Yeah. And then one chapter from the prophets, one chapter from the gospels and one chapter from the epistles. And I actually made up like little bookmarks for myself so that I would know where I was in each of those. Um, so, so again, that was one chapter from the Pentateuch, the first five books of the Bible, one chapter from the Psalms and Proverbs, one chapter, I said from the prophets, but I think it was actually the prophets and all the historical books, one chapter from the gospels and one chapter from um, the epistles. So if you need more help on that idea, let me know in the comments and I will go into that with a lot more detail um, about how to do that and what those specific groups of books are that I just mentioned. I'm going to work on the assumption that you know that, but you might not. And if you don't, that's okay. Just let me know that you need me to do a, a recording on that. So anyway, so work on those three things. Okay. Again, understanding that God's quote unquote, negative answers are answers and they are good. Okay. And making sure that you are intentionally praising him for those. Second, sharing those things with others and writing them down. And third, read your Bible, all of it. Okay. So those are three big challenges and I hope that they really help you. Um, next time we'll be talking about something else. I have quite a few things to share with you that have helped me with anxiety. So this is the first one though. This is really, really laying the foundation for building your faith. Okay. I love you all. I will talk to you later. Bye-bye.